Hi, this week's Weekly Roundup, we're seeing lots of 3D printing stuff, a couple of wireless modules and a gamer's watch. Kickstarter is big on desktop fabrication this week. The Solder Doodle Plus is a follow-on to a previous Kickstarter and is essentially a USB chargeable soldering iron that has an adjustable 15 watt heating element and an OLED displaying power and battery levels. Can be used by either lefties or righties and has a bunch of tips for either plain old soldering or fixing up those 3D print goofs. Has a four hour charge time for the onboard 3.3 amp hour battery. The Protein 8x2 is a 16 channel FET controller. It's been through a number of revisions and this current version has headers for an ESP8266, HC05, also contains an RS-485 and an Antmega 328P, giving you, of course, SPI, ITC and UATS. The 16 FET channels have a decent amount of protection, such as back EMF, ESD fuses and opto-isolation. Each channel can handle 3.6 amps, but it's only rated for 120 volts mains. Looks like a well thought out board though. In need of a desktop vacuum former? The vacuum form is pricey, but seems to be gaining some interest. There's not much to it really. It has a heater and a vacuum, which is all they are anyway. Has a nine by 12 inch forming area and seems to do the job. Another 3D printer, this time it's for the whole family. This printer is trying to make it easy and simple to make 3D prints by providing coffee capsule style filaments and a flash interface that will help you print out some demo models or your own creation. Has cooling fans to cool it down after printing anything up to 200 millimeters cubed on dual extruders with 60 micron resolution at a speed of 100 millimeters per second. Fab Pocket comes from our French friends and is a beginner's 3D printing toolbox. It contains everything that you'll need to not only get started, but understand what you're doing as well. It's capable of printing 34 millimeter cubed at 100 microns and doesn't contain a heated bed. So it's really aimed at the beginner market. It's a great idea, but the price tag is a bit of a shock. Now, I'm not a gamer. Well, I was when I was young. I remember getting seasick playing Wolfenstein 3D. But anyway, you can now enjoy all those seasick moments from your watch. It's not just another smartwatch. Well, it is, but contains a Snapdragon 2100, 512 meg RAM, 4 gig EMC, IMU, AMOLED, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all running off Android OS and a 400 milliamp hour battery. It also has an SD slot, and when you plug it into your computer, it'll run Pixel Furnace, which is sort of like iTunes for games. They're working on Atari to bring in official titles, as well as Terraria, however you say it. It's a nice little package. The Air Ink is an idea that's come out of MIT. It's a way of capturing exhaust pollution from vehicles and extracting carbon pigments from the rest of the rubbish in the soot to make inks. What a great idea. You can buy a range of markers in varying sizes. The two millimeter round tip marker equals 40 minutes of pollution. Nice. Me Arm Pi is another robotic arm slash stem product built around the Humble Pi. It's a complete DIY package with four servos and buttons and joysticks for control. And since it's a Pi, you can use the language of your choice. Or they have provided an open source Node.js app where you can program it in Blockly style. On Indiegogo, there's, oh, okay, there's nothing. Okay, moving on to crowd supply. The free SRP is in pre-launch status and is an open source software defined radio capable of transceiving from 70 MHz to 6 GHz. Contains an AD9364 transceiver chip and a Xilinx Arctic 7 FPGA, giving you up to 62 mega samples per second at 12-bit resolution. Nice. Now I'm big on home automation. I rebuilt my house with CBUS throughout. But now, Brilliant are taking pre-orders for a Linux controlled touch panel light switch with inbuilt Alexa for only 149 US dollars. Okay, clearly this is only for people with money burning a hole in their pocket. I really can't justify buying one of them, but some of you might be interested in it. Over on Tindy, there's a light that flashes when you make changes to your WordPress website. It comes with a WordPress plugin so you can make it flash on any event you want. If you still use SCSI on your system, then this little box allows you to use SD cards as a storage medium on a SCSI or ACSI bus. And this small board uses the ICS43434 I2S digital microphone and is designed to fit onto the Butterfly, which is an STM32 based board. It'll sample from 20 Hz to 20 kHz at 24 bit resolution with 65 dB signal to noise ratio. The BLE113 is a nice Bluetooth module. 
This one is a small board that has one on board as well as an IMU. All the GPIOs are broken out and runs off a plain coin cell battery. It has firmware to enable full OTA and the board can be powered from 4 to 20 volts. The SAMD21 is a nice MCU that we'll see more of in the future, hopefully. This is another board based on the SAMD21 but contains just the bare essentials for running it, so you'll need your own 3.3 volt supply. Breaks out all the 34 GPIOs of the SAMD21. And if you're into drones, then this small board will automatically switch between two different RF signal sources. Useful if you have two RF transceivers on board for short range and long range, or for just testing out new transceivers. Over at SEED, they have their cheap RTL 8710 Wi-Fi module. That's unfortunately out of stock again. And their crazy fly, or however you say it, ITC based SD card data logger, which is why is why is everything always out of stock? Heck a beck. Okay, over at Adafruit, they have in their popular PyCom Lopi, which is a tri-protocol wireless module. Gives you LoRa, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth all in one module running on an ESP32 capable of automatically switching between any of them. If you want to get into long distance comms, then get one of these. Or there's the PyCom, which just has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth running on the ESP32. Both have MicroPython pre-installed. There's also the iShield Plus, which is a Pi Hat containing an Atmega and Bluetooth. It's not a Pi Hat, it's an Arduino Shield! The idea is that you pair it to your phone and it'll make use of your phone's iMuse, GSM, GPS, Wi-Fi, etc. Essentially, a tethered experience for your Pi. Arduino Shield! Now, this is interesting. SparkFun have some bi-directionally stretchy fabric that will change resistance based on how much stretch it's undergoing. And then there's some other material that you can also measure pressure, bend, angle stretch, and torsion. Now, this gives me a great idea. I think I'll order some of these. Over at the cheap side of town, Banggood have a number of touch TFT screens a, I don't know what chipset it is, 2.4 inch Arduino shield, a 2.4 inch Nextian panel designed to be completely controlled over UART. Also has an onboard SD slot and RTC. Also there's a 1.4 inch TFT controlled by SPI running the popular ST7735. You can also pick up a load cell capable of measuring up to 500 kilograms. Nice, not many of those around. And we're starting to see a lot of ESP32 clones now. Then there's this STM32 base board in an Arduino form factor powered from 3.3 to 12 volts and seems to have everything that you need. And this slightly cheaper version running the F446 instead of the F41 version of the STM32. Over at Ellie Crow, there's a relatively cheap NRF24 based board with a decent antenna on it. While Aussie Station have gone completely wireless mad again with a bucket load of Bluetooth and RF modules of various capabilities like this QN9020 based Bluetooth module supporting OTA or this NRF52832 development board. Don't forget to use my promo code if you purchase anything from IC Station as you get 15% off. So you might have noticed a small change in the way I'm presenting this weekly roundup. A number of you didn't like the website flicking, so now I'm just using static images. I'm also trying to speed up my workflow and reduce the time taken for this video down to a couple of hours from the day and a half it currently takes. So that leaves more time for creating more content and also picking up some part-time work. Let me know in the comments below if you have any more suggestions. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next week.